Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You? I'm doing good. Uh, thank you, Scully. And Scully, thank you so much for uh, giving me your time today on this interview. No worries at all, mate. Thank you. So, Scully, on May 27th, you released your uh, new EP, The Noises. So, would you like to tell me a bit on the songwriting and the production that goes behind this new album? Um, well, it follows our, our debut album, which we released in 2020 um, during the height of the pandemic. Obviously, the worst possible choice we could have made for releasing an album. But um, it gave us something to do at the time whilst we, you know, we couldn't do a lot. So we had some fun with that online. Um, but the pandemic obviously set us back like it set everyone back. Um, so once the world was through the worst of it, we got um, meeting up again and writing. And... Uh, yeah, we kind of sort of focused in on a bit more on punk, I'd say, in, in to an extent in certain certain aspects of the uh, EP, well, at least with the like the lead track. Um, I I think that kind of come from not being able to do much for so long, and we were just like burst into get our music out there and get our songs out there and get our thoughts on things that were going on in our lives out there. Um, and the, and the noise, like the lead single from that, was was sort of born out of that feeling. Um, but it's quite a mix on the on the EP as a whole. We've got um, we touched upon sort of like pop punk and sort of straight up rock um, and heavier and heavy rock as well in in um, Gleam in the Cube because uh, we like to we don't really restrain ourselves when writing and a lot of the band members have different uh, inspirations. So somehow with this band, it just seems to work rather than it being a bit odd that. <laughs> certain songs are of a different sound and um it just when we come together and write it just it just works um and the ep is quite a, a really good uh, demonstration of uh, how how that is um in terms of like the band members it's always been Zeus on guitar or Seb on keys who's often come up with the music and they'll send me the music and I'll listen to it a few times and get a feel for the song and then I'll even meet up with them personally or I'll I'll gather some uh, lyric ideas and then meet up um and send it back to them. Um but with the EP, Dave, who's the bassist, also had quite a lot of input this time, which he didn't have so much on the album. And that again brings another mm -hmm. perspective with the music. He um he wrote the music for Gleam in the Cube and Young Stars. And uh when he sent those to me I could sort of instantly tell it was like a little bit different and so I sort of pushed for the for the band as a whole to develop those those tracks as well. I think it keeps it interesting when you have a collective uh, working on the songs rather than just one person or two people. Sometimes it gives a bit more variety in what you do. I think as long as you don't get too carried away, so it's uh, too all over the place, then it, it can work really well. Fantastic, fantastic. And but the, uh, the noise uh, does it have uh, some kind of uh, focus towards the album on the lyrical lyrical part, or is just a diverse album? Um, a focus on the lyrics. Uh, I I tend to f I generally write just with feeling. So um, most of the time, I try and hold back on writing too much. Uh, without music, I tend to take the music that the the other guys do um they're not really the, they don't, they've never really ventured into lyrics at all so it's quite good for me because i don't play any instruments and i can't play the music so i wait for them to send me music or play me something if we're at rehearsal and then i generally tend to go off how that music makes me feel in terms of which direction i take it with the songwriting um yeah as i said that the, the noise was kind of just a lot of <laughs> angst and, and anger sort of been held in at not being able to do anything for so long and I think it just all came pouring out in that track as a bit of an attack on quite a few <laughs> people in some parts of that song um but you know I, I like to write all kinds so like the the latest latest single line work um is a totally different sort of track to the rest it's a bit more Zeus sent that to me he's just on an acoustic guitar and I listened to it a few times and then just yeah it just uh tugged on the heartstrings a bit and I related the track to uh, tattoos and how we can trace our, our live choices back through some of the art and that on our bodies, just how I took that, the, the lyrics to that song. Um, so yeah, I take inspiration from all places and it was the same with the debut album. Um, 
again, I don't, I try not to restrain myself and thinking I have to write about a certain thing. Um, if I want to write all out punk song, I, I will, or, or, or the heavy rock route, I will, or if I feel like something softer, I will as well. I don't let anyone dictate to me what, what I should be writing. I just always write from the heart. And that's, I think that's one of the strengths of the EP is where it's, it's, um, you can kind of feel the passion, I think, when you listen through to it. Beautiful. And uh, you have also released uh, videos for Young Stars and the title of the uh, EP, The Noise. So would you like to tell me on the making of these videos and uh, the works behind it? Sure, yeah, The the Noise, um, we always try and to find a different kind of location for our music videos. We don't like just going to a studio and getting some fancy lighting rigged up and then just trying to make ourselves look as cool as possible. And in that sense, um, I prefer, and we all prefer as a band to to sort of seek out um, locations that are sort of generally near to us because we're still, you know, an independent band. We haven't got the biggest budget at the moment. So I, we tend to uh, have a look around, ask around and see, see what we can get. Um, with the noise, I put out a call out on Facebook, actually in some community groups, just saying we're shooting this music video, looking for an outdoor location. Um, if anyone has any ideas and sent like some previous videos that we'd done. And I had a, a few options, but then one came through from a firefighter from the local airport in Brighton. And he just said that he should be able to work it so we can hire out one of the airplane hangers. And we we're like, <laughs> we're like, well, okay, didn't didn't see that one coming. But yes, definitely. Um you know, when you're an independent band and you're, you're still working your day jobs and you get offered things like airplane hangers to shoot a music video, you're not going to turn it down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a great it was a great location for that. Uh, Billy, Billy Lund, who's in the subways, he features on the track. So he came down for the music uh, video shoot. Um, the only regret of that shoot was the fact that it was January here in England, which is freezing um, and obviously an airplane hangar. <laughs> in January is is equally freezing. In fact, I think it was colder in the hangar than it was outside. But that's what it felt like. Um, so yeah, as much as it might look like we're rocking out and in, in our element in our element in our element in the video, um, we were all freezing our asses off right there. Yeah. So that's <laughs> but it was good fun. Yeah. And that, so that, was, uh, that was the noise. And Young Stars did the, did the same thing again. It was it's sort of a pop punk element to young stars it's um not really a genre we we tend to go into but it just it just happened that way uh, with dave and when he wrote it um and i felt that vibe when i wrote the lyrics so kind of went that way and just wanted to i think locally there's a lot of uh, a lot of youths that get a bad rap for various things i think that's just a global thing that you know teenagers and youngsters and that always tend to get um shit for for stuff even if they haven't done anything and i wanted to shine a bit more of a positive light on some of the local youth so uh we filmed that video in the local skate park and uh again put a call out to see if anybody wanted to come down and be in the video and luckily for us quite a few uh youngsters turned up and uh skate skated around us whilst uh we shot the music video for that one um that was great fun still freezing <laughs> <laughs> We've done it in like March in England, still absolutely freezing um, at night time in England. But um, it, again, it was great fun. And uh, I think when you watch our videos, I don't, I don't think you sort of imagine that they're just put together again by like a DIY band with, like, with no outside input. They're all our ideas. We don't have a crew or anything. It's just like one to two uh, videographers who we've done videos with. We don't have a budget really you know we just just enough to cover paying the people that are in the video and shooting the video and i think they, they just uh they just come across really well and we did uh young stars a uh, little quick story about young stars was that um again like previous videos we didn't have any like rehearsals or anything apart from obviously knowing how to play the song so the kid that turned up on the day with the skate skateboards we didn't have any rehearsals with them or anything um so they they did really well to uh step up like when we needed them to skate around us and things like that and one particular kid 
who we uh we gave a a lit smoke grenade to and we was in like the bowl in the skate bowl and i was trying to hear the track because obviously i lip syncing the track and i was singing the song and uh speakers this is this is why it's proper diy what we do the speakers that we were using to play the track had run out the batteries had run out but there's no power anywhere because we're in the middle of a skate park so my drummer drove his car around as close as he could get it to the skating bowl played the song as loudly as he could and then the band stood around me in the bowl you can't see them obviously in the music video but stood around they were clapping like in time to make sure i kept in time <laughs> i could hardly hear the track Whilst the skater was skating right around me, about an inch from my face, with a uh, lit smoke grenade. That was, yeah, that's that's how we roll, man. <laughs> <laughs> also, 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 and uh, I know you are currently uh, touring in UK, but is there some big plans to tour around Europe later this year or early 2025? Yes, um, we're always building. We're always um, trying to treat every year like we need to do something bigger than the previous year, and we. Ever since we formed the band in, I think it was about 2018 that we come together as we are now. We, was, we did go under a previous name for a couple of years whilst we were finding our feet. Um, but I think around 2018, technically, is kind of the time that we, we started launching the band. So since then, every year, we wanted to do bigger bigger things. And this year, is obviously the release of the EP, um, which has been a big thing for us. And yeah, to tour the UK and hit as many many towns and cities as we can um whilst we're still all walk, working around our, our day jobs basically at the moment but the idea is to just to keep building that way um and the ep we're going to use as like a, the springboard to 2025 where we plan to record the second album and then yes off the back of that is the dream then to get out of england out of the uk and then to start doing some shows around europe and then who knows the world after that is what we hope that's what we're aiming for but yeah every year bigger things so next year yeah we do we do plan to start getting out further than just around our own country fantastic fantastic and uh what would be some of the upcoming plans as a band apart from the touring um so once yeah so once the tour's done it runs through to october um and then we don't like to waste much time we, you know we believe in the songs that we got out there now and the, and from the album we still play them loads and the, and so many people haven't heard them yet so we're going to always constantly push those tracks but we're going to move straight on and start writing for the second album we've already made a start um so I, i'd imagine through the winter months we'll be sort of huddled up in our studio and and writing for the album and then hopefully early next year maybe spring between spring and summer next year i'm hoping that we'll actually get into a studio to record it and then after that it'll be a case of planning the release and and getting more more shows more and more shows further afield that's that's the current plan for like the next sort of 18 months i guess fantastic fantastic and uh the band was formed back in 2020 and uh sooner you released your debut album two finger tantrum and now the ep so how do you feel the road that you have traveled so far that's been for you um it's been it's been great it's been hard i think like any band at our level finds it hard i've seen so many bands over the years kind of like trying and i hear their music and i'm like oh they're really good they could you know they could go somewhere but then they just i don't know they run out of steam or they run out i don't think they run out of passion but just uh i think the belief dwindles with people over time and then they they just sort of quit and give up um what i love about my band creature creature and all the band members are is that um they're the most passionate people and they'll they'll sort of drop everything everything to gig and they want to you know get our music out there more so it's it's been you know up and down in terms of you know the pandemic which affected everybody because we couldn't play any shows to promote the album so that was always tough when you you put everything into your first album yeah. and then literally can pretty much get hardly anybody to hear it or you know can't do any live shows so that was the toughest part i think for us as a band so far i'm sure you know everyone was affected by that in different ways so it's not like a thing of um oh, poor us we just just stated the fact of what happened then um but as soon as we was out of that it's like okay let's work towards picking everything back up again now and that's the yeah that's the beauty of of the band that i'm in is that they're always there and always ready to 
ready to do that because I think it did um, destroy a lot of bands and a lot of artists at, at many different levels that pandemic era. Um, so yeah, but we're just just I just feel lucky that I've got a good bunch of guys that want to carry on and uh, and keep working our way up the ladder and getting our music out there to more people. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, I'd like to know how do you come up with the name Creature Creature for the band? So we um we we used to go under the name Forty Shillings on the Drum, which is quite a mouthful. It's a very long name. Uh, we was a folk punk band, so kind of like uh, Pogues, Flogging Molly, um, Dropkick Murphys kind of sound. Um, that kind of stemmed from me because it, I just love that genre. Um, I listen to all kinds of music, but that that kind of owned my songwriting style. Even though we've moved into a different genres, really with Creature Creature, my lyrical style kind of stemmed from that, and I tried to keep hold of that a bit to make us a little bit different to other bands. Um, so we went under that name, but there, yeah, when when we started writing the actual debut album, it was like it just doesn't suit doesn't suit where we are now. It was great for that period, but it doesn't suit where we are, where we're going, and also yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. We want something a bit more snappy, so we just sat around trying to think of. Uh, things that have happened in our lives, you know, we're writing down random words. It's just, I don't know, I've always found right, creating <laughs> band names is quite a hard thing. I don't know, yeah. I've been in a couple of bands before and you sort of sit around and think, you, you try and do something you think sounds really cool and it's like that, then it's like, that's shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you think about it too much, I think, a lot of the time. Whereas really, you know, the best stuff comes when you're not thinking about things too much. Um, I think in the end, Creature Creature came from Zeus, the guitarist, if I remember right, when he was um, very little, he had a, a favourite film. Well, not very little. Okay, when he was about 10, I think, one of his favourite films was Critters. I think it still is one of his favourite films, Critters. It's like, a, bit like, it's a bit like an 80s uh, um, sort of sci-fi horror, a bit like Gremlins, but with different creatures. And uh, he used to be terrified because they used to fire these little needle things out at people in the film. And uh, he was always scared that they were going to roll out from under his bed and fire these needle things at him um these creatures everywhere and he was telling me that story he kept saying like creatures 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 <laughs> creatures creatures rather than critters for some reason um and then i was just like you know what creature creature that's that's i think you've got the band name there <laughs> and i was like oh and i said like, yeah creature creature you keep saying creature 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 about this in this story and i mean yeah i think that will work really well so there we go it was just through our guitarist fear of imaginary monsters when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And uh, what has been some of the highlight moments for the band so far? Um, we've, we've had a few. We've had um, getting Billy Lun on the to record the EP, um, and then guest folk on the track was quite a big thing because I've listened to his music for quite a while. Um, I've got his one of his albums. Uh, Young Fraternity somewhere with like it's got like Rock and Roll Queen and um what's the other track? <laughs> it's got some good songs on there. Um and so I've listened to him for a long time. His, his pictures even on a local venue is on the wall. Uh, it's called the Pipeline in Brighton. It's like a real grassroots venue here in England. Um and his his pictures on a frame on the wall and he used to go there and do gigs and used to see him up there. And then to get to a point where he now recorded the album for us and also featured on one of the tracks. It's just, you know, it proves something to us as a band. It's a bit of recognition. I think you kind of strive for some recognition when you're independent and unsigned and, and doing stuff to make, you know, you know, you're good or you, you think you're good, but it's good to get stuff back from other people. And there's that reassurance. I think when people like that sort of take you under their wing and, and believe your music's good enough that they'll lend their voice to and things like that. So that was a big highlight. And then the other one was um, we haven't been able to get into a lot of festivals yet. Again, same story. Being independent is very hard. Uh, you try reaching out and most of them aren't really interested until you've upped your presence a bit more, which we are slowly getting there. But we managed to get um, Rebellion Festival in Blackpool uh, in August, which is one of the like biggest independent punk festivals in the world. So it's it's quite a big deal. For us as a band to get that and then we got the timings through and we're actually headlining the introducing stage 
So that was like massive news for us because we've never played there before. And it's like one of our first major festivals. So to get offered that slot is, is huge. And it's something we can use, I think, as we move into next year to try and get us some, uh, some more festivals. So yeah, that, that's probably one of the biggest things that's happened to us so far. Fantastic, Ron. Thanks so much for sharing with us, Kali. And is Kali finally any message that you have for the fans around the world? Um, oh, yes, just keep listening to us. Look us up if you don't know what we do. We do a massive variety of songs and it's all with passion and heart. Um, we love we love our fans. We love our followers. We're a very accessible band. You know, I'll make time for anybody. Who wants to speak to us at a show or who wants to reach out on socials um we're not one of these bands that like swan around the venue like thinking we're the greatest gift to the music scene um we, we kind of think we're one of the greatest gifts to the music scene but we don't act like it <laughs> and we will always talk to anybody any any fan that you know that the to us the fans you know they're the reason that we do what we do and we wouldn't really probably do it if it wasn't for the people that are, you know, listening and, and loving what we do. So I'll always give credit and always uh, make time for anybody who loves our music. And uh, Scully, I want to thank you so much for giving me today this wonderful opportunity to have you on this interview. And uh, thank you so much for the noise and amazing EP by you guys. Fantastic work on this EP. Uh, loving each and every song from this EP. Thanks so much for the music awesomeness and keep doing this and uh, hopefully someday we'll meet on the road. Definitely. I would love that. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye.